G'day guys, Elfie here, and welcome to episode two of the Custom Entities tutorial series. By the end of this particular video, you will have your 3D model for the entity and the basic texture that goes along with it, like what you're seeing on screen now. If you haven't already watched episode one to get the required software, please pause this video, go back and watch that, and then come back to this one and move on from there. All right, let's get started. Launch Blockbench. It should open to a screen similar to the one showing now. Since we're creating a model for Education Edition, we're going to choose Bedrock Model. Click that, brings up a dialog that allows you to choose the name of the file, um, which is kind of unimportant at this stage. The Model Identifier, which is really important, um, and you need to remember this for later, and the texture size. Don't stress too much about the texture size just yet. It's adjustable later on. Um, so just, I'm giving mine the name Genetics, uh, the identifier Drosophila, and I know this entity is going to need a bit of texture space, so I'm going with a 64 by 64 texture. Click confirm once you've named, identified, and picked a texture size. Um, now, I want to stress that this is most certainly not a full block bench tutorial, um, but I will tell you this. There are groups and there are cubes. Minecraft references groups as bones, and it is these bones that we use later when animating our entity. We will cover this in more detail when it comes to the animating section of the series, but if you can think of logical groupings of your model that will you will likely want to move together later, it's a good idea to try and get those groups happening now. All right, Minecraft models are made up of a heap of 3D boxes arranged in a particular way. It's these basic boxes that we're going to be making today. I'm not going to go through the whole creation process, but for this first part, I'm creating a head group, and then I'll add a cube in that group will be the actual head. You can use the colored arrows to move the cube to where you want it to be, um, and the size in the upper right to make the cube larger or smaller. For this model, I'm also going to add eyes in this head group, but I'm going to put them in their own subgroup and what this means is that the head and eyes will move together, but I can always do something with the eyes separately if I want. Okay, continuing on, I'm creating a body group similar to the eyes and a separate subgroup for the tail and so on and so forth, using the arrows to position the cube and the size to make it proportionally the correct size. At this stage, most of what you need to worry about is proportion and relative detail. There are ways and means of adjusting scales and everything later if necessary. Okay, fast forward time, rinse and repeat groups, cubes, positions and sizes until you have a model you're happy with. This basic model that you can see on screen took about 10 or so minutes, but I've created a similar one in the past, so I kind of knew what I was going for. Take your time, make it look what you want it to do. All right, what I have now is a whole heap of logical groupings for elements that I want to move separately later down the track. Um, each leg and wing are separate so I can move each independently. I suggest you pause the video here and get your own model ready for the next step. Don't create something too complex. Go for something simple yet effective for now um, and take your time and mess around and try and get yourself comfortable with Blockbench. Okay, now that you have your basic model, it's time to wrap it up in a texture. First thing we need to do is actually create a texture and that can be done by pressing the Create Texture button, funnily enough. That can be found on the left around halfway down. Clicking that brings up a box that allows you to name your texture I generally leave it as texture. Um, also, since this is our first texture, we can get Blockbench to create it as a template. So tick that template option and hit go. What this does is creates a really neat texture map for you, which is way easier than trying to do it yourself. Trust me, I spent ages creating my own maps before I found that little tick box. It's time consuming and frustrating. All right, so now it's time to start painting. In the top right, click on the paint tab and you'll get a color selector and a few paintbrush options. Pay attention to the paint bucket options when you click that. It gives you the option to do a couple of different fills and depending on your needs, it may speed up the painting process quite a bit for you. What is great about doing this in Blockbench is that you can see and paint your model in 3D rather than trying to map a 2D texture onto a 3D model in your head. Like before, rinse and repeat painting your model to look how you want it to look. Again, for me, fast forward time, took around five or so minutes to do, but I'm no great artist. Um, it's serviceable, <laughs> but it'll do. Like before, I suggest you pause the video here. I know there's probably less than a minute to go, but concentrate on painting your model and then come back and we'll finish off the rest. Okay, finally, we wanna make sure we save our model and texture together so that we don't have to do it all again before going into the next video in the series. So save your project somewhere safe and click that save icon next to your texture on the left there. And that's a wrap for this episode. Don't forget you can come back and rewatch any parts that you need to scrub up on and tune into the next video where we actually make our entity appear in Minecraft, one of the most exciting parts of this whole process. 
As always, if you're having issues, reach out in the comments section below, um, on Twitter at EduWealthy, or in the Minecraft Education Discord channel. There is a link in the video description, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks. Bye.